Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm going to show you one trick for getting a more balanced master. Now, as a mastering engineer, you don't have control over the instrument balance or the instrument blend of the track because you didn't mix it. You didn't do those volume balances. So sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge to get your bass, your treble balance, to get your bass instruments to sit nice with your guitars, to get your vocals to sit nice in the mix, to get your master balanced overall. Today I'm going to show you a trick that can help you attain a better balance without having to go too narrow and try to you know, pull up just the kick drum frequency or lower just the snare frequency or find where the bass is ringing. I'm going to show you a general way to find these ranges and to get them up or lower them and control them to get a balanced master. To illustrate this, let me show you the before of the track and then I'll click in the plugins and you can hear the after. And then we're gonna dive into this multi-band compressor and I'm gonna show you how we balanced out the different frequency ranges of this track. So starting before and then we'll do after. So that's before. You can hear things are a little bit harsh up on top, maybe a little bit too uneven in the low end, and it sounds a little bit scooped for my liking. So let me show you what it sounds like after here. You can hear how we kind of evened out the low end a little bit. We pulled back some of that harshness, controlled some of that high mid area, and we gave that mid range a little bit of boost so it's not so scooped sounding. So it's a more balanced sounding master after we put in these plugins, after we put in this multi-band compressor. Our low end gets a lot more even. We have a lot more mid-range presence. Our track is a lot more even rather than being all over the place. It's not so scoop sounding and we're really controlling our high mid area so it's not so harsh. So let's jump into how we're doing this. What we're doing is we're separating the track, the song, into four different frequency ranges. Now I identified these by listening to the track and looking at the EQ. So if we're looking at the EQ here, I could see my low end is kind of below this 180 area. And then, My mid-range area is going up to about 1.5K here. That's why we have our first two, right? Below 180, and then we're going up to about 1.2, so a little bit under 1.5K. And then we have our high mid area that we need to control, right? So that's from 1.2 to about 5.5, almost 6K there. So that's this area here. We're going to about 5K here and then everything above that, if you'll see. So that's our cymbal noise, and that's gonna be our high end on our vocal that we're gonna to need to control, so S's and T's and stuff like that, if those are jumping out. So what we're doing to control each of these ranges, if you take a look here, we have our ratio set to 20 to one, so we're treating each of these ranges as a limiter. So we're gonna limit each of these ranges, not too much, some of them drastically, some of them just a little bit, just to hold them in place, make sure they're not getting too crazy. Our attack is all the way up at one, release is all the way up, so we're going as fast as we can. So it's gonna be aggressive, but we don't want it to sound too aggressive on some of these ranges. Some of them, you're gonna see, especially here on the low end, that aggression's gonna give us a little bit. So let's start here on the low end. Let me solo up everything below 180 here. Take a listen.
You can hear we're getting a little bit of distortion there on the kick drum because we're pulling the threshold down far enough that it holds our bass guitar in place. But it's giving us a little bit of distortion on our kick drum because the kick drum's pushing against that ceiling. But this little bit of aggression here is going to give us a little bit more attack on our kick drum because we're pulling it down so it holds our bass in place. But this little bit of distortion on the top of our kick drum is going to make sure our kick drum comes through the mix. So we're getting a little bit of balance control here on our kick drum and our bass guitar. Moving on up here, now we're in this mid-range area, 180 to 1.2K. This frequency range here, you notice, we're just getting a little bit of control on our, on our snare drum, right? That's where we're getting our compression. And it's also going to be a lot of control when our vocal's playing. I'm not playing in the vocal area of this track because these haven't been released yet, so I can't, I can't very well play you the finished track here at the moment. So just little snippets here and there. So this range is gonna be focusing in on our vocal as well. So controlling our snare drum and vocal. And now what you do after you control each of these ranges, right, you wanna put them together piece by piece. So now I've got our low area and we've got our mid range. So you balance those two together. What you can do here is if you want more mid-range, right, you can pull your, go to your gain knob on your mid-range area, your mid-range frequencies, and just pull them up a little bit. If you want 2 dB more, if you want to pull a little bit less, if your low end's a little bit too much, right, if your bass is a little bit too driving, just pull your low end frequencies back. All right, now we're going to move up to our high mid area. So this is our range that was a little bit too harsh. So we're controlling that high mid area on our guitars and especially on our vocals. It's a little bit of a higher sounding part, right? A little bit of that kind of 80, 90s rock and roll era. Vocals are a little bit high. So we're making sure this area isn't too harsh so it doesn't turn off the listener. And then again, go back and mix it in with your last two. Notice here, because this was too much, we compressed it and then I'm pulling it down a dB. Last area here is our high end. So this is 5K and up. So the high end on this track was way out of control for my liking. So we're compressing it quite a bit to keep the cymbals in control, and it's gonna keep our S's and T's, any kind of cymbalance range on our vocals in control, as well as that high end on our guitars if it's too much. And then I'm pulling the gain back 2 dB, so it sits nicely with the rest of our, I don't know why I sold these up, I could've just unsold the top one here. So this high end area, 5K and up, is gonna sit nicely against the rest of our frequency ranges. <laughs> By isolating our different frequency ranges, right, our low end, our mid range, our high mid area, and our high end, we can control them, compress them separately, and get them to sit where we need them, and then balance them together. So rather than going in with an EQ and trying to pick out specific frequency ranges like I want, or kick drum, oh, I need to lower the bass a little bit, or my vocal's sticking out here, we can control overall frequency ranges, right? We're bringing down our low end threshold to sit at the ceiling of our bass, and it's giving us a little bit more attack on our kick drum because we're getting that little bit of distortions because it's pushing against this ceiling. And then with our mid-range, right, we're just bringing it down so it sits on top of our vocal, holds our vocal in place in the mid-range, and then we can bring that up so it competes with our low end. 
high mid area, we're pulling it down so it's not so harsh, right? Setting our ceiling, so anything that gets too much hits our ceiling, doesn't go past, and then we're using our gain knob to sit it in with our mid range and our low end. And then of course we have our high end here. We're pulling it down, pulling our threshold down so our symbols aren't too much, our sibilant range isn't too much, we don't get too much of those super highs on our electric guitars so they're not too harsh or extra shiny. And then again, using our gain knob to pull it back 2 dB so it sits with the rest of our frequency ranges. And then after you get things balanced, after everything's being held in place, right, we got all our ceilings set, then we can go in and boost stuff, right? Like a little bit more sub area, a little bit less of that bass, boosting a little bit of the mid range. See, we can also do that here by pulling up our gain knob for our mid range and then just a little bit less of that high mid area because we have it controlled, right? We have our threshold set and now we can pull back specific ranges rather than all of the ranges. One more time here to show you the overall effect we'll do without and then I'll kick our plugins in and you can hear how separating these frequency ranges out and balancing them together, so compressing them separately, treating them separately, and then putting them together and getting our balance as we go. So it's like we're building our mix out, right? Getting our bass, then our mid range set, then our high mids, and then bringing in our high end. So we're building up these pieces as we go. Then we're going and attacking specific frequency ranges with our cue, and that allows us to get a more balanced master. So one more time, we'll start without, I'll kick it in, you can hear the effect of these plugins. Hope that was helpful for you all. Before you go, I do want to give you a gift for sticking with me here till the end of the video. This is my seven step mixing checklist. You can download it using the link in the description. It is a free resource that I want you to have. It will guide you through the entire mixing process step by step to get you professional radio ready mixes without the guesswork and without the hassle. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.